Well, welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About It, where we take topics and conversations that you want to hear about, and we talk about it. Let's go. Well, welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About It. We're back. We, we back. The trifecta. So oh, we are that's talking pretty good. It's been, this week. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, thank y'all for tuning in with us. Man, we're so grateful. Aren't we grateful that students watch we are. this? I think, right? Hopefully. We're grateful. We are grateful and thankful. For all you've done. P, why are you always <laughs> keep going, singing? Keep going. No, keep going. No, no. Well. Honestly, as I started to sing the song, I was trying to think of if that was a real song. I don't or think it was. It's not. Sometimes I'll make a song. For yes, something that's that why I wanted you song. to keep going. Sav, don't. Sometimes don't. it's just a song in my heart that kind of comes from scratch. That's what I'm saying. Sav, so, I'm for you. Sav, why, you're not for that. You are not for that. It's, it's whenever we live together and I'd like, I'd come out of the room. I'm like the last one to wake up in our house. Sabe's been on there just like reading the word or something. <laughs> the lights cracking through the windows and I'd like walk out of my room, door opens and I just start singing and Sabe's like, go ahead, go ahead. From like, like the she's terrace. like on like the like, yeah, balcony like, looking the in. section yeah, yeah. above. She'd always just be hyping me up. First this thing is, though in the morning. That is not Song in my heart. Want. That is not how I want to start ever the day. I just want to start slow. So I mean, I feel well, that. same. Like you, you know, no, you want to start singing. Apparently, it was singing, but then after I sang, I was silent for a few. Yeah, minutes. it was just silent. <laughs> back to silence. Back to silence. <laughs> so I decided to give her a little minute of so singing. I just needed a moment. Yeah, that's, that's it. all. That's good. That's, that's good. Savvy, I got a question for you. What okay. have you been up to this past weekend? What have I been up to? Yeah. We had a few. Um, well, we had one birthday party. Mm. I don't know why I was about to say a few birthday a parties. Few birthday. I was like, wow, that was so popular. <laughs> It was actually a two-year-old birthday party, so I don't know what that says, but yeah. Um, We went to a birthday party. Peyton was there, too. Mm -hmm. And then, actually, my mom's birthday is today, so then we did celebrate her birthday yesterday. So a few. That's Mm, two birthday mm, parties. mm, mm, Um, Why you have your hands like you? Two birthday parties. Two birthday parties. (laughs) Two birthday parties. Two. Um, But that's pretty much it. It was pretty chill. That's good. Weekend. P, what about you? What would you do this weekend? We went to that same birthday party. Mm. And then we were mowing. Well, not we. Caleb Whoa. was yeah. mowing the yard. <laughs> you're now taking credit <laughs> for his mowing. We we're were one. mowing. We're yeah, one. you're one. We're yeah. <laughs> no, it, Caleb mowed. But it was like the first mow of the season. Ooh. It was like apparently a big, That's deal. A big that, deal. What does that mean? I don't know. Like, holy, it's like it's like the first day of spring. Like the first <laughs> mow of the season. <laughs> I don't know. All I know, though, is like living when he went outside to start mowing the, the lawn. You know how you like. I don't know much about mowing. What's that like cord that you pull to start the mower? The string? Yeah, is there like a name for that? The lawnmower string? Yeah, you don't know either? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, do y'all know what that's called? No one knows, I don't know what it's called. No, okay. <laughs> no, no one knows. Okay, so no. I'm not alone. He's so like, no. He's pulling the lawnmower string and on his third pull, the string pops out of the mower. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Did it start? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I told him I so ain't mowed a day in her life. <laughs> start. But uh, then he had to like watch all these YouTube videos try to figure out how to like put the mower back together. Wow. So what should have taken just like two hours to mow the whole yard took like four. Whoo. That's there's a message there. That's grit. That's grit. We got it's the grit. gritty He's going on. on. Hey. Oh. hey. Hey. <laughs> Take that back. No. Take that back. <laughs> you know, I love man, grit. I my story was full of grit from this weekend. I gotta tell y'all okay. what happened. Ooh, tell us. I saw this post on Facebook and it was to pick up some trees. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they said that they would pay. It's like, whoever. you know, when people have like a soundboard and it's like a crowd cheering in the back. We should have that. Yes. We don't need that because he does it for himself. He's like, okay, woo. Yeah, yeah. Some trees. Mm-hmm. But this like, is, <laughs> we don't this need real. sound effects, but okay. We don't. But let me tell you, we do need them because okay. there was a lot of trees. I showed up and I was like, wow, this is a big job. But she was like, You're by hey, yourself. I'm by myself and we wanted to make some money so we could go out to eat. <laughs> 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 whatever it takes yeah, yeah whatever it takes this is greedy and so uh i looked at all these trees and i'm like i don't know if these are gonna fit in my truck and she's like i don't know if these are gonna fit maybe i should call somebody else i said no no ma'am i'm here no ma'am no yeah. ma'am and so no, ma'am. y'all i literally started loading these trees and have you ever been in that moment where you're like man i think i'm in over my head i don't know if i'm gonna be able to pull this off 
but yet you're already in it, so you have yeah. no choice. Yeah. But at this it's point, you gotta finish. Send. It's a full yeah, it's send. a full send. And yeah. so literally, because I like she's gonna pay me to get these trees. I can't load up half of them and then be like. Yeah. Hey, can you pay me? She yeah. would not pay me. So I uh, spent the next about 30 minutes loading these trees, put these bags in the back of my truck. Like they're like yard bags full of mulch. One of them had a hole in it. And I'm like, you know what? I need to get paid. Like it was like, <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, it was the grittiness. And uh, strapped them down. A tree <laughs> flew off. What kind of tree? It was a shrub. Okay. It was. It flew off in the road. Like a leaf. So like I did not. No, no. It was a tree. <laughs> a tree a leaf comes off. Like a whole branch. It was. It was. It was. It was, it, was, it was a branch. It was a branch. Okay. And Where were you at on the highway back road? I don't want to share because oh. maybe that's oh. not good. You know. <laughs> It's a back road. I'm kind of yeah. telling on myself at it's this like, point. It's through, yeah. like, through like the 25 mile yeah. per hour. I'm really Greenwood sorry Street. if someone yeah, hit yeah, that. Yeah. I'm really sorry, but uh, I did the best I could to strap it down. But all that to say, like I had to. Do, it was like a whatever it takes mentality. Sure. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I share all of that to just transition. Okay. Oh, you know what I'm good. saying? We're talking about whatever it takes today to share our faith. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Sharing your faith, having that gritty mentality. <laughs> Let me ask, um, like. Do you feel like it's difficult sometimes to like just share your faith randomly? Like we call students to do that. Have you ever felt this like awkwardness or like, I don't really know if I can do this mm-hmm. kind of feeling. Mm-hmm. And what do you do with that? Yeah. Well, to answer the question first, I think absolutely. Even the other day we were at um, the courthouse. Kid just got a new car. So we were having to go to the courthouse to get this waiver and stuff. And when we first got there, it's like we haven't eaten lunch already. Rookie mistake. Uh oh. We should have eaten lunch beforehand. So we're hungry. We're tired. You just walk in. You just already feel like this, like lethargic when you walk into the courthouse. You're just yeah. like, mm. this is not it. Mm-hmm. So, but there's this huge line. People have been waiting in the same line we're just stepping into for like five hours at this point. So Ooh. Caleb's like, we should have brought some snacks mm-hmm. or like some games, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> something. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, you're right. Like, just already feeling it. And then a few minutes later, this, as we're like getting in line, Caleb starts having this conversation with the guy who's sitting next to him. And um, eventually the conversation led to a spiritual conversation. They start talking about church. The guy's asking a ton of questions. And meanwhile, this, so Caleb has this guy on the side of him. They're having this whole really cool spiritual conversation. Right. I have this girl on the side of me. <laughs> And I'm thinking to myself, okay, like Caleb's doing a really good job. I should be doing what he's <laughs> doing. In this conversation. Yeah, yeah. And like, I should be asking this girl a question. I asked yeah. her like three questions and she was pretty sweet, but I was just like, ti- like at that point, I'm just like tired. Like it right. pulled down to like, I wasn't feeling it. Yeah. And so I honestly didn't really have much of a conversation with her. I stepped into Caleb's conversation a few times, but to answer that question, I think definitely there's a lot of reasons I think that mm-hmm. we can step into that whether it's that like we're scared of people are going to think about us or we feel right. like the weight of the decision that they're making for the lord like we put ourselves into the equation of thinking that we're the ones who are going to impact their decision mm-hmm. we just need to be found faithful um or sometimes we don't know or we're tired i think there's a variety so of reasons mm-hmm. yeah that we might not step into a conversation like that um which is i think the reason we're sitting here to talk about it today i'm just bringing that to light but then also to encourage students of how they can have more courage to step into those conversations too. So For yeah, sure. definitely. That's good. What are you going to say, Seth? Um, yeah, I was just going to really agree. It is difficult. Um, I think for all of the reasons and more that you just listed of like rejection or just like fear in general, or maybe not even being prepared or not even being like, or feeling like, oh, I'm not prepared even like, um, like mentally in that space to like really enter a full conversation really about anything. Like at that point you're like, I don't know if I could even carry a conversation about anything right now. And so what do you do when you know you're called to something that's fairly clear in the word of God to like share your faith, to share the gospel, but how do you best prepare yourself in light of like the list of things that make that really difficult? So I agree. For sure. You know, so I was thinking about this because, um, I recently did, <laughs> y'all know this, an evangelism training at Fusion. And I walk into <laughs> the room and it was like quiet. Yeah. Uh, Sav, you remember. Yeah, it was pretty quiet. It was scary. It was like I thought that somebody, like maybe someone's dog had died and everyone knew yeah, this it was, dog. It was oh, not the time. dog. It was silent. Not the dog. I don't know it what happened. It wasn't a dog. But, no, it wasn't. There but was it no was dog. like, I don't know if it was a friendship. I didn't know if it was like an awkward breakup it had just taken place, but it was like quiet it was no offense to those students who were in there love y'all but i was like okay hey like 
did I miss something? Because mm-hmm. we all know I can miss a few moments, right? You know, I just walk in, uh, but I hadn't missed anything. We just started talking about like the idea of sharing your faith because that's what the class was for. And I'm like, hey, like, why is it so quiet? Like, I want to get past the whole, I don't know anybody because the whole nature of evangelism is reaching people who are far from God. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what you want to do. So you're not going to know them, mm-hmm. right? So you have to kind of have some desire to talk to people. But I walk into this room and I really didn't see the like desire yeah. to even talk to people. Yeah. Like starting there. What are you going to say? No, nothing. I was okay, cool. I, yeah. You like put your mic up. Like no, you're, you're about good. to drop a <laughs> hot point. And I'm like, no, I, just oh. ready. I was like, come on, Seth. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> no, I was so, just agreeing. <laughs> so I was asking them and it's actually something that you said uh, a moment ago. I was like, hey, y'all like what are y'all thinking about? Like what's keeping you really quiet from really wanting to engage? Mm -hmm. And they talked about like this fear of what are people thinking? And that very fear kept them from doing the thing that they were there to do. Mm -hmm. And so I just had everyone stand up and, and like, just, just start to talk, just start to talk to one another. And I mean, you saw the wall start to break. Mm -hmm. And so I would just maybe ask for his, like just for a quick second and for y'all to speak to this pay you've been in school a little bit more like recently than I have it's been some time but like what do you feel like is the like what's the culture like in school when we say hey students go share your faith y'all speak to why would this be difficult I have some thoughts but like what what are your thoughts on why mm-hmm. this would be difficult like more than just fear of rejection like mm-hmm. let's get a little bit deeper than yeah. that what would you say well, I think even back to whenever I was in high school, um, I think a big thing that was constantly running through my mind was I see these people every day, like mm-hmm. the people who I would be sharing with or who maybe the Lord put on my heart when I was in high school to start having spiritual conversations with or just tell them about Jesus or even something as simple as like inviting them to fusion with me. Um, I was scared of rejection, but also the fact that like it wouldn't maybe just end in that moment. like. Mm-hmm. It's different when you're telling a stranger about Jesus and they leave and they go to live their life and you continue right. to live your life. I think it's another thing, like another fear that creeps in when you're like, oh, when they reject me, feel like they reject me. They're not really today. Tomorrow I'm going to come back to math class and they're going to still be sitting next right, to me and right, they're going to be right. like, so yeah. like, how'd your day finish right, yesterday? Right, right. You know, like it, it'll be awkward or whatever. I think that's a pretty big feeling that like we can feel typically when it's people that we are around more frequently or when we're in high school, people who are on our sports teams and our classes is that we're going to see them tomorrow. And I don't want to break this friendship or I don't want to make it feel awkward or um, I don't want them to think less of me or I don't want them to leave this conversation with me and to go tell other people about this conversation and like make fun of me or right. whatever. Like we mm-hmm. care so much about us and our reputation and um, we think we care so much about the friendship that we're not willing to step into a conversation when it's actually the opposite. For sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. I was thinking about this. Like if evangelism becomes me centered, it won't cross over to being Christ centered. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because if we're so yeah. concerned about how other people think yeah. of me, and let's, let's just be real. I think that that's why some of us get fired up about mm-hmm. the idea of doing like evangelism. Like I, you know, y'all were in like a live sent class where they mm-hmm. sent you out to go share your faith yeah. with yes. strangers. Mm hmm. Which, again, I don't really have a huge issue with. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, there's not a lot of like things on the back end of that conversation Mm -hmm. that you would really be held responsible for. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Can you elaborate? Okay. So Mm -hmm. like if I was to go up and share my faith with a stranger and send them away. Like, I don't really, I won't see them the next day in math yeah, class. Yeah. I won't see them, you know, like the mm-hmm. idea of them maybe seeing and then like me being held responsible to mm-hmm. living for the thing yeah. that I just shared with you about. I think there's a different call there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does that make sense? Is you're it's like, a bigger cost. Yeah, it's a bigger mm-hmm. cost. And like, man, it really is a high cost to evangelism. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like there's a high cost to it. Yeah. You know, the idea of like, sharing your faith but then also living your faith yeah you know how many yeah, times have you talked cool. with students you know so have you talked about this recently talking yeah. with students and then like saying no like it's not just saying it you got to live it yeah yeah and i think that's like what when i think about schools i was just talking to my fusion group about this because they're kind of they're seniors so they're like ready to be out of school like they're ready right. to be done right but also 
I've been trying to like teach them to like really leverage this opportunity that they have to share their faith um, or to just like live by their faith and have people ask questions too. But um, there's not a like better mission field right. than like school. I think maybe just because we're in it with these students that I just see that like from a different perspective than even when I was in school. But these students, yes, like it is a little bit daunting, like, oh, I'm going to see the same girl in math class every day for the rest of the semester. So like if I like make an awkward conversation now, I'm going to be known by this like right. for the rest of the semester. But at the same time, like a different perspective is I have all semester to build a relationship with this, yeah. like with this person that I'm in this class with. And all semester I get to build trust to like talk through like other things to build like a friendship. Yeah. So that there's more like there's more weightiness. You more yeah, you have more yes. credibility. Yeah. yeah. To then share what I say is the most important thing in my life. And then there's so much clear opportunity and unavoidable opportunity yeah. really for follow up. Yeah. And so I think, yes, the cost is high, but there's such a clear honestly really awesome opportunity to step into that and it's bold but right. what the lord could do with your faithfulness to have that conversation and then the fruit that could come from just the unavoidable like continuous interactions that you'll have with that person right um it's just super cool so Peyton's pulling out her sword here come Let's on pay tell us hit us with well, it well i think that what you just said Sav, is so big because it it does pull back down to perspective and you kind of hit this too yeah. of like the angle that you see evangelism through really does matter. Yeah. And so often we make it about ourselves and we think like even something is like the specific lie of, oh, if I say something wrong, then right. like yeah. I'm going to get in the way and like yes. that's going to be yes. the thing that yeah. hinders them from actually knowing Jesus yeah. Um, when like it isn't about us. Mm -hmm. And like I was um reading through Acts, I think at the beginning of this year, Sorry, I'm about like Louis Phil. Um, and it's so interesting because basically the end of Matthew, Jesus is about to send ascend back up into heaven and he tells his disciples the great commission to go to make disciples, to baptize these people in the name of the Father, the Son, the Spirit, and then to teach them to obey what God had commanded them. And then right after that, his disciples, they begin to split. They're about to go tell everyone about Jesus. Right. And that's whenever we pick up in Acts. Um, and it's so interesting because it starts out in Acts 1. Um, what is this? 4. Basically, Jesus had told them to stay for a little while in the area that they're in. And it says in verse 4, 1, 4, it says, And while they were staying with them, he ordered them to not depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise that the Father had given them, um, which was the Holy Spirit. And then a little bit longer, it's or a little bit later down in verse eight is whenever it says, but you will receive power mm. when the Holy Spirit has come upon you mm. and you will be able to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And I think so often we make it about ourselves when it is like zero percent with us. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. <clears throat> sorry, it's all about the spirit in us. Mm -hmm. right. And if we try to step into these conversations apart from the spirit, then that's done in vain. Yeah. If we try to step into these conversations or just even like building a relationship. Like I remember sure. when we left this evangelism training that you were talking about, mm. a big thing we were just talking about as a team is I feel like this generation of like students specifically, they've grown up so much on technology, on their yes. phones, like talking to each other over like their game system, like talking to each other over DMs or Snapchatting back and forth that when it comes to like verbal communication with one another, mm -hmm. it's like honestly a skill that really is lacking and there's a fear of how to communicate through your words you know mm -hmm. so even something as simple as like building a relationship over yeah. the span of a semester with the person that you're sitting next to in class mm -hmm. might feel daunting in and of itself yeah <laughs> so yeah. it's like yes we need the spirit to step into a spiritual conversation but also we probably and really do need the spirit to even start building a relationship sure. with the person who's sitting next to you too um, and it's when we see it from the lens of this isn't me stepping into this conversation. It's the spirit of God in me yeah. who's giving me the power right. mm -hmm. to have this conversation with someone. It helps us to remove ourselves from the equation and to really rely and depend on the Lord yeah. to have this conversation for us. And then on the back end, regardless of how that goes, if it's like they decided, hey, I don't want this right now, or they're mm -hmm. like frustrated because they've heard so many things about Christianity in the past and they think that you're just another person. Yeah. And now you're just on, okay, we're just going to go back to building a relationship or yeah. whatever. You can end that conversation if it wasn't positive in your eyes to realize like, okay, this is the Lord. Like his word does not return void. So as I shared about Jesus mm -hmm. with this person, I'm going to trust that God's spirit, just as he was doing work right now, is going to yeah. continue to do the work 
be on this conversation That's in their good. heart mm -hmm. and prepare more conversations for later too. Yeah. You nice, know, so uh, P, as you were talking, uh, I was I, I flipped to Romans one, and then I got a question because uh, uh, Paul, I mean, he goes in on this, uh, and we know this, we know this verse, Romans one sixteen, right? If you ever listen to a Lecrae song, you know, one one six, it says, "For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, mm -hmm. for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone." who believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Mm -hmm. um, man, I love the study Bible because, man, if you don't have a study Bible, I highly encourage you to get one so that you can take some of this stuff even deeper. But this is what it says in the notes. And because I really think it speaks to how we lose the the thought or the perspective of the saving power of the gospel. This yeah. is what it says right down here. Uh, he, it says, if we are ashamed to share the gospel, because let's just let's just pause right there. I think that sometimes we are ashamed to share the gospel. Mm -hmm. This is what it says. It's because we do not understand the power embedded in it. Embedded is like inserted. Like we don't understand the power in the gospel. Yeah. If we really believe it has power not only to save sinners, so that's people far from Jesus, but also to give victory to saints, that's also us who were once far from Jesus, mm -hmm. right? If we believe that, we'll share it. Mm -hmm. Like if we believe that it really has that power, we'll share it. And I think about this because I'm like, man, sometimes I do carry this like shame, not of the gospel, but shame that I have of myself. Things that I'm like worried that people will see if I start to speak. I'm like, well, I'm not perfect. You know, you mm -hmm. start to like mm -hmm. disqualify the gospel's power because you disqualified yourself based off of how you've lived. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so as a result, you don't share it. So I guess the question that I would ask, and let's give students some practical like tips, like to get their grit back. Like we want you to get your grit back, like and to believe that the gospel has saving power. What are some things that you would maybe recommend to students or say, hey, y'all, like step one, we just give them one step. Then you have three steps. Like what are things that you would say to do to kind of get your grit back to share? And let me just say this. I don't think that every student has to go out and do street evangelism i'm not really like the guy that's like let me go share and then yeah. like walk away like i think that there's a lot of power and i'm not saying that that there's not power in street evangelism because sure. there is yeah. but there is something to mm -hmm. being living proof of that loving god to that person in your math class every day you yeah. know what i'm saying yeah. so like what's something that y'all would say like how do you how do we challenge students to get that grit back do the gritty on evangelism. Is that a thing? You're like uh, really holding tight to the gritty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Is that not? Yeah. <laughs> Savvy, I, I knew that wasn't a good idea when Savvy looked I said, at the uh, like, oh, like the, the here, there the he goes again. Eye, I'm like, okay, we both. Get the gritty uh, back We have like again. a side eye count, honestly. <laughs> like, they're honestly like, thing. Yeah. I really want that. Uh, okay, yeah, okay so we'll let Savvy answer the question. Okay. Now. Um. I kind of forgot your question. I'm be honest <laughs> okay, I, hey, I remember the question. How do students get the greedy oh, yes, back? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember my answer. How could you forget that? I, yeah, sorry, I forgot. No, I think something I was thinking about this morning and even like off of that verse was I think a really practical way to like get that tenacity, that grit back. That gritty back. In Ooh, that see, gritty. It's, it's starting to I was work. trying to avoid it's that word. I was trying to avoid it. I was trying to avoid it. I was trying to avoid it. But a really cool. practical way would just to be remind yourself of the truth and the power of the gospel in your life. Come on. Like consistently. Yeah. Just like, That's yeah, good. consistently. And I think like whatever that looks like for you, like putting a verse or just putting the gospel like the Romans road, um, just reminding yourself of like how the right. Lord has saved you personally frequently. I was talking to Mario about this um, on the drive here. Mario is her husband. Yes. <laughs> Except I forgot my wedding ring. She's not wearing her I ring today. My wedding. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I forgot it on today. Let's talk about it. Um. Anyways, we were talking about this this morning because I was talking about the things that I'm like most comfortable to talk about in my life, mm. and for a while in college, I would say the most like like the easiest thing for me to talk about in general besides myself or my family was volleyball like because I lived my life playing volleyball talking about volleyball coaching volleyball yeah. watching film on volleyball like that was like my whole life was reviewing that sport 
So when it came to like, if you sat me down in front of a hundred people, which if you know me, that is really daunting <laughs> in and of itself. But if you sat me down in front of a hundred people to talk about volleyball during that time, that would be like the easiest thing because I've known it. I lived by it. I like played volleyball all the time. And so I was thinking this morning about it and I'm like, a lot of our students have a desire to and know the need to share their faith, but they don't like remind themselves frequently or like really live by the truth of the gospel and the weight of that and how that's played out in their own life. And they're expecting to share something that they haven't even been reminded of right. themselves. Right. And so, yeah, I think my first like really practical thing would be remind yourself of the truth of the gospel in your own life. That's good. So, that's Yeah. Good. And I think going off of that is to like know. Yeah like know the basics yeah. of the gospel too yeah. like uh, i talk with students a lot just as we go through even student leadership team training and we're talking about how do we start sharing the gospel and i ask them as they join the team to memorize just the verses in romans road mm -hmm. just like the simplicity of like for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god like the wages of sin is yeah. death but the gift of god is eternal life like working through some of these key verses because in the times where we feel like our speech and our own language isn't adequate enough what we can have confidence in is that the word of god does not return yeah. void <laughs> like on, it on. is like a double-edged sword it's gonna pierce come the on, heart P. of man, you know come on and so Keep when going. In, yeah okay okay <laughs> when in doubt though like when you feel like your words aren't enough like his yeah. word is more than enough Ooh. and so being able to know the word so that you yeah. can tell people the right. word mm -hmm. is so important. And right. so I would say going off of that, and the cool thing is, as you read these verses, like I remember when I was a student on our student leadership team, one day Stephen came in the room and he was like, all right, I think Paul McDowell was in the room. He's like, Paul, Paul. share your story or share the gospel. Paul McDowell. My kids sing that song. Paul Every McDowell. <laughs> Paul Paul McDowell. Okay, no, no, we're done. <laughs> we're thankful. We anyway, love Paul. So yeah. they, he tells Paul, he's like, hey, Paul, share the gospel right now. Yeah. And you could tell Paul was flustered. And yeah. in my mind, I was like, oh, oh. Paul's flustered. And then oh. I, was like, I was like, oh, if he called me, I would have probably passed away in that very moment because I didn't know how to answer the question. And so I just started like incorporating in my time with the Lord, like, through those following mornings, just like I put on note cards, those verses in Romans and on one side, I put the reference on the other side, I'd put the verse. And as I was reading through whatever I was reading through at the time, I would just spend like four minutes at the end of my time, just like reminding myself of those scriptures. So I could start to ingrain those into more of my DNA. And the cool part was like, as I was like spending time trying to memorize those verses, the Lord also was reminding me mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. power of those verses yeah. in my own life. Yeah. Like the fact that I was separated from him, mm -hmm. but because he was so good to us, he gave Come us on. the gift of salvation through yeah. his son. Come on. Like that also began to stir my affections for him. And then therefore made me want to share him yeah. with people yeah. too. And so I would say going off of what you said, like as you spend time trying to remember who Christ is and what he's done in your life, like also spend time to know the basics mm -hmm. of the word mm -hmm. too. Um, and then I think secondly to that is to like ask the Lord for help. Like as yes. you acknowledge yeah. you're trying to step into these conversations, like again, don't do it on your own. Kind mm -hmm. of already right. said this too, but like say, Lord, like today's I go throughout the day, I want to start having conversations, but I'm scared. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. And like, I need your help to have these conversations. And so give me courage, give me confidence, yeah. give me boldness because of the power of the spirit in me to step into these conversations. And then also like having people who are in your corner who are trying to do the same thing and yeah. who can encourage you and hype you you up as yeah. you step into these conversations mm -hmm. or walk with you whenever you feel like it was discouraging or whatever sure. too because there's been so many times like where we've even had conversations about mm -hmm. family members or friends that we're trying to share the gospel with or mm -hmm. we invite those friends who we're trying to tell about Jesus to come and hang out at our house yeah like just so many things where we begin to do it with one another and inviting those people in to see the life that we live in Christ mm -hmm. like we've talked about that so much today too that it can't be just about your words mm -hmm. that you speak that's right um it can't just be you sitting in class and telling them about about him because if you leave class and then you're on the football field later that day and like you're living awfully or you're right. cussing up a storm or you're being like you're making fun of a person on your team all of a sudden you lose every bit of credibility you just had in the conversation right. you had in math yeah. class and so like also we're there to be able to like hold one another accountable to how we're living our life mm -hmm. not just the things that we're saying but then as we invite people in to see our life in christ then we're doing it with one another which is also just fun at the same right. time and so yeah, I think knowing the basics, asking the Lord for help, mm -hmm. and then having people who you're walking alongside as you That's have so them. That's so good. That's so good. good. Is that where you're going to say something? Yeah, Come not on. to just like sit there for too long, but yeah. I think the importance of if you're sharing your faith to live by it is yes. so yeah. 
True. Yes. And just that. And then we overcomplicate it. But I would even go as far to say, like, come on, if you're going to share your faith come and on. not live by the gospel, you're don't. confusing. And please don't yeah. like Ooh, you're hold making on, hold it. On. Run that back. Sam. <laughs> Run that back. <laughs> Sam. 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 For the people who had the volume on three, turn it to yeah, a turn, five. Turn it go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, if you are sharing your faith, sharing the gospel, but you're not living by it, please don't because you're confusing. You're confusing, confusing it. You're making it harder for the rest of us to be able to give an account for what the Lord has done in our life, yeah. but then also to share that with people. Like imagine you're on the receiving side and you're like, oh my gosh, Jesus did all of this for me. And like, I can live in freedom and like fill in the blank and victory and all those things. And then I see you living completely opposite of that. Right. It's so confusing. It and so the, uh, it's just as important to share with your mouth and to live by it. And I just don't, I don't want to go too No, quick no, trust that. me, Sav, because like as P was talking, I'm, I mean, I started flipping. In this. <laughs> you I, you I, really I, were. I, you <laughs> changed like books like three times. Like, I, you're really really go. I was like, oh, wait, we gonna go here. We gotta go here. This is what James says, because uh, this is what y'all are saying. You need to know the word. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna start right there. You need to know the word. Then you need to share the word. Then you need to live the word. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and we know a lot. Mm -hmm. And some of us are willing to share, but then we stop at living. Yeah, but this yeah. is what James makes so clear. James chapter two, verse 19. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run it back to verse 18. But someone may well say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without the works and I will show you my faith by my works. Check this out. This is huge. James mm -hmm. 2, 19 is in the word of God. You believe that God is one. You do well. The demons also believe. They know. Yeah. Yeah. Whew. yeah. And shudder. Yeah. So the demons know yeah. the word, right? They won't share with you the word, mm -hmm. but we know that Jesus is getting tempted by Satan, by the very words of God, but mm -hmm. in a deceptive way. Yeah. So they will share with you the word, but they will dis they will distort it. Yeah. So they know they will share mm -hmm. by twisting. They're just not living. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. just not living. I'm telling you, some of y'all, yeah, this, is, so good. Come this, is, really this good. is good. This is verse 18. I'm telling you, if you don't have a study Bible, you need to get all up in this thing. But check this out. In the Hall of Faith, we did a message on this. F Fusion is so good. Hall of Faith, Hebrews 11, the author repeatedly describes what various Old Testament figures accomplished by faith. Belief was demonstrated by what they did. Mm -hmm. That's so important. How you live matters. Yeah. Yeah. It matters it because does. as you said, Savvy, it can get so confusing. So we yeah, talk to students. The thing that separates yeah, yeah. us from the demons in that case is literally Ooh, just the fact that the we're live. living. The, the, the only separate, the yeah. degree of separation was living. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll say it again. The degree of separation <laughs> from the demons knowing about the Lord, yeah, yeah. they will share in a distorted way was that of they're not living it. Yeah. We are living it. That's yeah. how we're different set yeah. apart yeah. holy so, good. so my thing was for students that mm -hmm. got me fired up man if you want to kind of get your grit back get the greedy back yeah. my challenge is check your fruit <laughs> yeah yeah check your fruit galatians chapter 5 this is what it said but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control here's the reality when i've got a fresh batch of fruit and it's sweet to the taste and i've got some people around i will share it you want to know because i want you to experience the thing that i have it's like when you abundance. started making sourdough bread yes and i wanted everyone to know <laughs> forget fruit forget bread. fruit have y'all had sourdough bread <laughs> i did i saw because, you, because when you started making that sourdough everybody bread, knew everyone knew everyone knew you even if they didn't ask so and everyone one was tasting <laughs> yes. your sourdough bread because yeah. i wanted them to yes. experience yeah. what i had yeah. in abundance yeah. right yeah. and so there's like it's the same thing with the gospel <laughs> you brought in like a whole loaf Come yeah. on. <laughs> are you trying to convict me no. on how much sourdough said, oh, i think it's good for you i heard yeah, i wanted to I heard. share it right? <laughs> I, I heard once i wanted you but to yeah. experience no, yeah. it and when you've like tasted and seen, yeah. right, what we're talking about, man, you'll mm -hmm. naturally want to share it. So we're talking about like, go for the low hanging fruit. Yeah. Like students, like don't make this more difficult than it has to be. Yeah. Go for the person in your math class that you see every day. You have mm -hmm. some influence, just don't squander it. Yeah. You know, by talking about trivial things or things that won't bring them life. So, mm -hmm. man, this is so good. Whew, y'all, we better end this because I had a bunch of other places that we I could talk flip for too, too long. That was <laughs> only two little <laughs> things back and forth. <laughs> that was only two to six flips. Uh, seriously, y'all, this is this is so much fun. Students, I hope that you are men really kind of taking in what we're talking about. Evangelism is so important. We want to reach people far from God. Yeah. 
and we don't have time to lose. We just don't have time to lose here. So thank y'all for tuning in for another episode. Peace out, man. I love doing this. It's yeah, a lot of fun. It is fun. Yes. But until next time, we will see you then. Peace.